because baby you got what I need you say you're just a friend so we <laughs> yeah that's what I do I just randomly go into song because that's play because when we take ourselves too seriously we don't play doesn't know me well no I don't take too much seriously um even the idea of awakening I don't take very seriously because the harder you chase awakenings the the farther it gets for me the the more elusive it seems and so I tell I've been telling students this for years and People that have attended my meetings and sat songs for years, you know, stop trying so hard, but give all of yourself to awaken. It's that oxymoron, that contradiction, you know, if you will, that kind of drives the mind nuts. You, you're supposed to try as hard as you can, Laura, and at the same time, let go and just relax and stop trying so hard. And, uh, this is really when we get to the point of that that frustration of uh, that that comes with that contradiction um, that's when real awakening starts to emerge that's that's when we start to really experience the fruit of awakening but what i've noticed in my own existence and i've noticed that matter of fact i was sitting there talking doing a little one-on-one -on -one, have a little coaching session with someone today and i was um talking to them even even in my own existence i still have to remind myself and re kind of remind myself what i'm passionate about and recalibrate because it's really easy just to, to kind of in our culture in this the day and age that we're living in it's really easy kind of to just enter into this state where we're just existing and we're not really living we're not really touching that moment fully we're not really following the heart and the things we're passionate about and we can still be seeing life as art and, and and experiencing the artistic nature of life even in those as benjamin was saying earlier those mundane things those seemingly seemingly boring activities become uh, those the, incredible the mundane turns into magnificence when we're living out of the present moment like when we're truly mindful of the present moment truly living out of the present moment and yet still this is just the person living out of that present moment it's just the avatar experiencing that present but what i really love more than anything else is transcending that present moment and stepping into the realization of being present and as you are just living out of that place of presence, man, you know, I'm like, I'm wondering, like, what? Because my, my heart's desire, my longing is for as long as I can remember, I mean, since I was a teenager, was just to live in such a deep ecstasy and out of the mind state. And in previous school, school has taken on lots of different names over the years, but Ecstasis Institute, that living out of the mind, Ecstasis means to be out of your mind, living in that out of mind state. And one of my great desires in my heart is to see human beings, other human beings, other people manifest that out of mind state. Not just because they're in my in my mind, they're perfect. The way that I see them, they're perfect. Somebody looked at me the other day, other day and said, Silas, you have to stop seeing through rose-colored glasses like you did. Like that's not reality. And I said, I will never. You might as well get this through your head. I will never not see people as perfect. That doesn't mean that sometimes you don't have to step away from someone. It doesn't mean that you don't have to go, okay, you're continually repeating this behavior and I'm gonna step away from you because it's toxic in my life. But you can still step away from them and recognize their perfection. What, what's beyond that manifestation? So my heart is not just that we can realize their perfection but in order to realize their perfection we have to realize our own perfection 
And until we realize our own perfection, our own innate divinity, we're not going to be able to see it in others. So how you see others is always a reflection of how you see yourself. So I'm realizing more and more, and what I want to talk to you about tonight is those five rules of creating a healthy mindset, because realizing more and more that the manifestation, while we're just kind of, sometimes we get caught up in just going through the motions, and we're not really manifesting the fullness of our mind of our like the neurons and the synapses and making all those connections and playing and in the in the body and in, in health and and in the and all the the glory of our physicality or the glory of our emotions of creating with those emotions and playing like as an artist i want to explore all the possibilities of this body and i want to explore and experience and play within all the energy fields of the world. That's kind of what we do as, as artists, as life artists. And, and so creating that healthy garden of our mind is super, super important. Now, I want you to picture with me a garden. Everybody get an image. I don't know what that looks like for you, but get an image of, of a garden in your mind. Now, if you have pictured with me this garden, Odds are it's got a lot of fruit or vegetables and the and it and it's really nice and clean and, and you have everything in order, right? Is that kind of the picture you have if you've pictured a garden? Like you got your green beans over here and your your tomatoes plants over here and your corn over here and you got your your peppers and your onions growing and all your stuff, all cucumbers and all your stuff, right? I mean, is that what you're picturing? I don't know. That's what I picture when I think about all garden. No, Laura, what were you picturing? What picture popped up in your mind? Messy wildflowers. Awesome. Messy wild, a wildflower garden. That's incredible. It's great. I love it. So one, if you, has it, has anybody ever gardened? Like had a garden? Garden? Yeah. Awesome. Now, if you know anything about gardening, every plant requires different amounts of sunlight requires you should plant in different places like a garden requires a lot of planning if you're gonna have a big garden i'm not talking about just throwing a few plants in the, in the ground or it requires a lot of planning and what i realize is the vast majority of us are not actually creating a plan to grow a healthy mental state to grow a healthy mindset where we're tapping in to the creative potential of the mind in order to do this we we really should create this plan and i don't mean sit down and labor through creating a plan i think it's really simple to create a plan and you can get very specific with those plans today i'm just going to talk to you about a kind of a general plan for a healthy mindset and then you coaching and stuff you know, we can do coaching and stuff if you want to go into more detail about creating a very specific plan geared towards your goals and the things that you want to accomplish, the creative potential that you want to see manifest in your life. But creating a plan doesn't have to be real difficult. The big questions we need to ask are where and what? I'm not going to go through all the W's, but where and what? Like what? Where, where in our mind, what, where in our mindset should, do I, do I want to see more health? Do I want to see more, more productivity? Because I want you to consider this for a second. If you don't do anything with your mind, if you just kind of go through the motions in, in our society, what kind of, what kind of fruit, mental fruit, mental health, emotional health, physical, if you just go through the motions with your physical body and you don't have a plan in place with your physical body, what kind of physical health do you think you're going to be in? What kind of shape do you think you're going to be in? If you don't do it with your emotions and your, and your mindset and your, 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 your spirituality, what kind of shape do you think you'll be in? What kind of emotional state of being do you think, well-being do you think you're going to live in? And I know a whole lot of people that whenever they have an emotional outbreak, an emotional issue, is when they reach out to me. And I always tell them, this is not the time to try to to, we shouldn't be trying to fix this. This isn't the time to reach out. The time to reach out is, is when you're in, in, a, in a 
clear state of consciousness, having a clear mind, and you're lucid, so that we can create a plan to feed your mind what it needs and create the healthy emotions so that when you enter into those storms of life, you don't have a negative, it doesn't have a negative impact, a negative, a negative effect on your life, but like Jesus, you can squeak through the storm. Right? So this is what we need to learn. So where? What what where where in your relationships? What do your relationships look like? Well, you can go, okay, hey, in 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 my the area of the area of relationships, I want to plant this garden. I want to begin to steward a healthy garden, a healthy mentality in the area of relationships. It can be friendships, it can be lovers, it can be whatever. In the area of business, I want to plant a healthy garden and begin to create healthy fruit, finances, family. Where do you want to plant the garden or, or what area of your mind? It can e even be physically, which is uh, to all my clients, it starts in your mind, then in the kitchen, then in the gym, you know, then in the physical activity. But physically speaking, that is a place where you must begin in your mind to plant a healthy garden, healthy habits, create a healthy program, if you will, and it starts in your mind before it ever starts. A healthy image of yourself. How many of us have negative self-image? Right? Um, I think we all, I have a pretty healthy self-image. I have a pretty healthy image of my own body. But every one of us pick on different things. We all pick on different things. I was at the gym today. And I pulled up my shirt. I was checking out my abs, and I pulled up my shirt. But I was really looking at my, looking at my little, tiny, little tiny bit of love handle. It's not even a love handle. It's like a, not even. It's not much, not much there. But I was looking at it, and this lady that I know, she rolls her eyes at me and goes, and I said, I know I'm out of shape, and she goes, Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> she's like you gotta be kidding me but i'm picking on so i'm critiquing myself right i'm critiquing the things that i go okay hey this is out of place i want to work on this but having a healthy self-image you gotta start seeing yourself different it's not about what you want to see what you want to create it's about how you see yourself anyway i'm going to talk about all this but what but where where is really a really important question to ask and then what what be get specific with the kind of fruit you want to eat like what well, you know one just throws a bunch of seed in the ground like if you want to have a garden i don't just take a bunch of seeds stacy and walk out into my backyard and just throw a bunch of seeds in the ground i don't just like buy random seeds and throw a bunch of seeds in the ground the odds of them growing are slim to none they're competing with all the other weeds and the, and the grass and the, the bush, they're competing with everything. And plus, they're just on hard ground. Like it just not, it doesn't work. So what do you want to create? How many of you can definitively, as soon as I say, I say, what do you want to create? Definitively, you have a, something that you're passionate about that just rises into your mind. Like, yeah, this is what I want to create. Any, anybody? Anybody, just as soon as I said that, you have something immediate that pops to your mind. I hope so. Odds are we don't. Most people will not have an immediate image in their mind when I say, what do you want to create? And that's because we are going through the, the motions mentally. We, we, are, we are like that person that's just taking a bunch of random seed. We're on social media. We're on Facebook, on our TikTok. We're on our Instagram. We're we're, we're on all these things. We're watching TV. We're, we're just reading random news articles. What, you know, we're, we just have, we're bombarded with all these feeds, all this information every single day. And we're not paying a, a bit of attention to what's being planted in, in the garden, in the soil of our mind. We're just, it, it's just continually, we're being inundated. And then we are not even intentionally planting seed in our mind normally, unless you go, buy a specific book or search a documentary that you really want to watch or something that interests you. Like when was the last time you said, man, this is super intriguing, super interesting to me. I want to explore this. And you started studying and started exploring it or started playing in that realm or that, 
that 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 field. When was the last time you did that? That's what I want to encourage. But but we gotta approach it from the right with the right perspective in order to really see that fruit. So what do you want to eat? Like you don't want to plant a bunch of seeds, even if it's good. Like if you don't like onions, why are you plant onions? I, you know how many people, you know, Deborah, you know how many people I know that go, I don't like drama. I don't do drama. And all they watch on TV and social media is drama. They're like, I don't do drama. But did you see that trial? Oh, my God. I'll tell you, right now, I don't do drama, but so-and-so over there. I'm, it's like, yes, you do drama. You do a lot of drama. You, 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 you feed your mind drama hours every day. You do drama. So if you don't want drama in your life, and I mean, I'm not talking about the healthy kind of fun drama. I'm talking about like negative, toxic drama. If you don't want drama in your life, why the fuck are you feeding your mind so much of it? <laughs> you know what I mean, right? So we're... But, and it's just because we're kind of going through the motions and our mind has been kind of been programmed. Like, I like these, I like these shows and I like watching this and this is entertaining for me. And we don't even realize really what we're doing. So we need to begin to create a plan. The, 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 one of the number one secrets to really creating the garden of your mind, like the, the garden of your dreams, to, to bearing the fruit that you've always wanted to bear in your life. To, to creating the business that you wanted to create or the wealth that you want to create or whatever it is. One of the number one secrets is to learn, learn to live from imagination and not memory. Your memory is sabotaging your creative capabilities. Your imagination will thrive. It will open up. You'll be able to experience so many new things. As a matter of fact, like that's what a passage, remember that passage of scripture in Isaiah that says, behold, I do a new thing. You know, like don't remember the former things for behold, I do a new thing. We got to learn to let go of memory, where all our triggers, our past triggers, and all of our our issues are, all of our the walls that we build around our own little personal kingdoms are. Learning to let go of those memories and really sink into imagination and live from imagination is super important. And because that's where we start really getting creative, that's where we start really playing. Your imagine in your imagination, you are like a four year old. If you are really tapped into your imagination, you will find that you are playing all the time. Have you ever seen a four-year-old? They can't walk from the living room to the bathroom without creating a new game. <laughs> right? I mean, like, it, you, it is, you are constantly in your imagination. Dude, until I was, I was going to say until I was like 12. I'm really honest with you. Until I was like, okay, I'm still doing it. I am continually creating stories in my head, just fun stories. I know they're not even real, you know, like playing characters and, and so playing characters and like believing, like I remember when I was like 12, Indiana Jones came out, you know, like the first Indiana Jones. So I've got a little satchel and I got my whip, my bull whip off the, you know, uh, from a little store somewhere. And I ran around pretending I was Indiana Jones and pretending like I had a little monkey with me and shit. I got a blast pretending like I was Indiana Jones. I'm just not pretending anymore. I'm creating my own characters now because who is Silas? Silas isn't real. It's just a concept, just a name, just a label, just this, this, this body that we slap the label on that I'm manifesting within. It's my avatar. It's the thing that God is playing within. And it's got this own personal perspective and, and, and thoughts on life. But I get to create and play with this character. What character do I want to be? How do I want to define that character? Now, listen, if, you know, have you heard me say this before? And I think it was, um, I can't remember his name. One of these actors said, you know, suicide, the suicidal feelings are just the ego wanting out of the character it's been playing. And oftentimes that's what we're experiencing in life. We're experiencing frustration, irritation, aggravation. It's not, stuff, it's not just the fruit of a temporal mind. It is the fruit of a temporal mind, but it's also more than that. It's, it's the mindset saying, man, I want to play a different character. I want to have fun again. But in order to create a new character, you have to change your habits. You've got to change the things going on around you. You can't continue to do the same thing and expect a different character to come out. Indiana Jones. 
is very different than Silas. You gonna get into the character or not? You wanna get into that character, you can't just play the character one day. You gotta create the habits that create the character. All right, I'm not talking personality sculpting. I love talking personality sculpting, but we're not going down that road. But we do want to begin to tap into the imagination, tap into our playfulness, the playfulness of the divine, because the divine is so playful. I was listening to a stat the other day. Man, Silas, you got to quit rambling. I was listening to a stat. No, I don't. I was listening to a stat the other day. You know, the average four-year-old, uh, how many times do you think the average four-year-old laughs? The average four-year-old laughs up to around about 400 times a day. How much? How many times a day do you think the average adult laughs? 15 times a day. I can't remember who said it, but, this, but somebody once said, um, we, we don't laugh because we're happy. We're happy because we laugh. I know, I know lots of people. I've actually had had some of you guys who have been in the classes for a long time do this, but look in the mirror and just laugh. <laughs> a fake laugh until it becomes real. <laughs> if you do it, I'm telling you, try it. You will break out into real laughter real soon because you just are like, this is stupid. What is what am I doing? It doesn't even make sense. I'm just in there fake laughing in the mirror. Try it. Just try it right now. Fake laugh. Like, <laughs> you can't not for real laugh. You can't laugh. Laughter makes you feel good. It, it, it boosts your endorphins and it releases serotonin and dopamine and all kinds of good stuff in your brain and in your body. You start to feel good about yourself. You have fun. Laugh. Play. Like, let's. Jesus said you must be like a child if you want to experience the kingdom. I want to talk to you about the four realms of the kingdom in a minute. But and when I say kingdom, I'm not talking about the kind of I'm not talking about heaven, far off, distant Christian kingdom. I'm talking about the kingdom of your. Of, of, of where God dwells here, this eternal kingdom that we are. And um, so it's really important. Laughter is a huge part of that. Playing is a huge part of that. Being childlike is a huge part of that. And I think it's, I think it's really important to, to realize that like the creative is a precious and it's a sacred thing that we must care for and love. The creative aspects or elements of our imagination need to be cared for and they need to be loved. And I want to ask you, when was the last time you intentionally, you know, like, when was the last time you intentionally stewarded and loved and fed your imagination? You know what I mean? Like, you don't just throw some seed in the ground and expect it to grow. Like, you care for it. Like you care for an animal or, a, you know, a plant or we should care for our, our own imagination in this way. It's, it's a sacred thing. And unfortunately, what happens is we get stuck in these patterns of existence, these programmed patterns of existence, where we stop caring for the things that matter the most, like our imagination. I think if we stop placing value on I think if we placed a greater value on imagination and pulled back some of the value that we have on just relationships for instance I think our relationships would be far healthier <laughs> because you as a human you as a as a as a person as a manifestation a manifestation would be healthier and happier and more joyous and more loving and therefore your relationships would be healthier but sometimes we get so lost in our relationships that we miss the things that really matter about our own personal health our own our own health of our own imaginations for instance so one of the things we need to begin to do is we uh, we rule number one is create a plan and the part of creating a plan is creating a is a, creating a system of application or a routine. We're going to talk about this again in a minute, but when we create new routines, it creates change. 
And I need you to understand that if we want to change our mindset, you have to change your, your, your life. Like changing your mindset changes your life, but you also have to change your life to change your mindset. You have to ch create new habits, create new, new ways of doing things. And, and that takes time. And I'll, you need to realize right up front, all change is hard at first. It's really messy in the middle, but it's really beautiful at the end. It's kind of